next on The Sketchbook Veteran. Do you want to create fun, dynamic, and one-of-a-kind mid-journey images like these? The key to constructing consistently solid AI art is starting from a rock-solid, bulletproof prompt. What's going on, mid-journey artists? My name is David. I'm a traditional 2D illustrator with more than 20 years experience as a producer, designer, and artist in the video game and movie industries. Today, we're going to build a powerful and flexible starting prompt that you can use with any subject matter that you can imagine in just five easy steps. Let's get started. Welcome to the Sketchbook Veteran. This is a new YouTube series dedicated to the Midjourney AI art platform from the perspective of a working professional artist. Each week, we'll publish in-depth Midjourney tutorials, demonstrate how to use real-world artistic techniques, and we'll conduct workshops to explore themes, styles, and other emerging features from this evolving AI platform. In this episode, we're gonna build a super simple Midjourney prompt that you can use to start any new image using any kind of subject matter. Assisting us today is legendary Disney concept artist and illustrator, Mary Blair. Mary, who sadly died in 1978, was a trailblazing American artist and illustrator known for her dazzling, colorful, and whimsical style. Her work is epitomized by rich, saturated colors, a loose illustrative style, and simple shapes and patterns. Here's how Midjourney sees Mary's work. It's tighter here, but there's still strong emphasis on color, shape, and energy. Okay, let's move over to the prompt lab. The first step in building our powerful, flexible, and highly reusable mid-journey prompt is starting from a solid baseline. Here in the prompt lab, we're emulating the Discord interface with a slightly more visual style to make it easier to follow along. And I want to stress that all the images you see today were created in mid-journey via Discord with no retouching of Photoshop or any other application. On the screen right now, you see the structure or framework for our new prompt. Think of it as a three-sentence paragraph wherein the first phrase or sentence is a description of our main character or object, the action being performed, the foreground, the background, and the time of day. Onto that, we layer the artist, in this case, Mary Blair, and our final step is defining the camera and pose and any further parameters that we might want to add. So let's flesh this out. We're going to have a monster with yellow eyes, our main character, is standing on a rock, that's our foreground, in a forest, the background at midnight, the time of day. So let's finish out the rest of this prompt. Created by Mary Blair, a close-up dynamic action pose. We're not gonna to focus too much today on the final phrase, the close-up dynamic action pose. That will be in a future video. So for right now, let's just assume that close-up means where's the camera position, and the dynamic action pose is telling Midjourney, select an action for this character without us having to tell you. It's dynamic, it'll be a surprise. And then the final step is the aspect ratio, which in this case is two by three, a rectangle that is taller than it is wide. Let's run this prompt. But first, I'm gonna remove created by Mary Blair so that we can see the results using the default Midjourney house style. As you can see, these four images really did give us what we were asking for. A monster with yellow eyes, standing on a rock in a forest at midnight. The camera's relatively close, the character is in an interesting pose. What I mean by interesting pose, if you look in the community feed on Midjourney, you will typically see portrait styles where characters have their hands at their sides. Here, by saying close-up dynamic action pose, we get something a little bit more interesting, a little more unique. Now, let's add in Mary Blair. Quite a change, right? So we see the hallmarks of Mary Blair's style. Saturated colors, loose illustrated style, simple shapes, Diagonals and patterns. This looks fantastic. Let's keep going. The second step is probably the easiest step of all, which is we're going to start adding some adjectives to further polish and enhance our core prompt. Instead of just saying a monster with yellow eyes, we're going to say a mythical monster with glowing yellow eyes is standing on a mossy rock in a mysterious forest at midnight. And as you can see in the corresponding images off to the left, this is starting to give our prompt a little bit more energy. The characters are popping from the background a little bit more. There's a little bit more dynamism in the scene itself. 
We can also do pairs of adjectives. Instead of just mythical monster, we can say cute mythical monster. And what you can see here is that clearly we've jumped from something a little bit static to something a little bit more dynamic. You can argue whether the results of this are better or worse, but it's definitely pushing us in a direction. So the recommendation here is whether it's monster or eyes or rock or whatever the nouns and verbs you're using in your prompt, think about interesting adjectives that you can add in. And this is where you can experiment quite a bit and have a lot of fun. In addition to adjectives, Midjourney also responds to a number of special keywords or terms that act like special effects or wildcards. They're a little hard to predict, but they can definitely take your prompt to the next level. We're going to focus on just three of these today. Core, Wave, and Punk. Back to our previous prompt, a cute mythical monster. Watch what happens when I add the suffix core to the adjective cute. As you can see in the images to the left, the environment has changed. There's a lot more detail. The characters have more texture. Their forms are rounded. Essentially, core adds style. It's random style. You don't really know what you're going to get, but it's definitely worth experimenting. Watch what happens when I change cute core to cute wave. Now you get a little more detail in the character's textures. There's a lot more light being brought into the environment, whereas core applied style, wave applies light. And the final one, punk, gives you a bit of energy or edge or I guess punkness, if you will, to the image itself. You can also apply these to other adjectives. You can mix and match them. So instead of cute punk mythical, why don't I go with cute mythical core? Or cute core mythical punk. Let's expand upon our core prompt by adding an additional phrase that will really energize our results. Up to now, we've been working with a combination of Midjourney's default house color palette and lighting, which were themselves modified by Mary Blair's style. But we can take things a step further. Just like power words, there are many, many lights, colors, and accents you can apply to any scene in Midjourney. I provided a short list of my favorite lights and colors at the end of this video. Back to our core prompt a cute core mythical punk monster. Watch what happens when I add lighting, colors, and accent lights to this same prompt. Quite a change, right? So saturated colors, moody lighting, and firefly accent lights. All three of these are optional, but I chose to add all three and look at the results. We now have a great deal more detail in the relief where you can see texture and etching and bounce lighting. The environment also has more realism to it. This is quite a change from where we were. We can also enhance this by changing to vibrant colors or volumetric light or Christmas lights. There are so many options. Again, experimentation is the key. The final step is adding an additional artist to your prompt. This is how you create truly distinct images with a personal style. This is where we left off with Mary Blair. It's always been true that artists have strengths and weaknesses. There are things that Mary Blair does really well. There are things that Mary Blair doesn't do as well. Consequently, what you want to do is find a secondary or complementary artist that either covers Mary's gaps or enhances what she already did as well. I compare Mary Blair with Beatrix Potter or Dr. Seuss or Jean-Michel Basquiat. These can be artists that are similar or as different as you like. The key again is experimentation. I happen to like Beatrix Potter and Mary Blair together, so we're going to stay with them. As a final bonus step, you can also specify how you want to output your image. Is it a drawing, a painting, concept art, watercolor? By adding one of these terms to the end of your prompt, you can totally alter the way the image is rendered. For example, I added concept art to our Blair Potter image. And you can see the composition, the details are all massively enhanced. Or I can specify pastel art. And now we've gone from a more rendered image to something more hand-drawn. You can even combine terms such as watercolor or photography. Again, experiment and explore. Before we close, let's have some fun and test out just how powerful, flexible, and reusable this new prompt baseline really is. I'm going to show you several images in their corresponding prompts to illustrate that experimentation and exploration can yield incredibly diverse results.
And that's it. One prompt, five easy steps and a bonus that you can use over and over again as a starting point for any new idea you can dream up. And finally, here's a list I promised you of power words, colors, lighting, and accent lights that I've used in literally hundreds and hundreds of prompts. It's just a tiny subset of all the possible options, but these are my regular go-tos. And here are all the possible outputs that you can apply to the end of your prompt. Art mediums, different types of painting, different types of drawing and illustration. These can be used singly, these can be used combined. Thanks for visiting the Sketchbook Veteran. In future videos, we'll tackle topics like mixed media, character action, camera angles, and so much more. Be well, mid-journey artists. Sketchbook Veteran out.